Probably a pretty good idea, Bob, for the governor to stay here in the state and monitor the uh, situation because it is going to be a soggy, soggy time for the state of Florida. I was thinking it could be a lot worse. Obviously, uh, the, thankfully, there's some shear going on, Max, but this is not to be taken lightly. Whenever a tropical system makes landfall, it's uh, going to cause some problems down the road. Uh, heavy rainfall, possibility of some coastal flooding, tornadoes, all there. Three to six inches of rain. Some areas have already had up to two today, so we're going to see additional rainfall up to three to six inches. Some areas could see as much as eight by the time the storm exits. And as I said, coastal flooding could be a concern, especially tomorrow afternoon uh, through Tuesday morning along the coast. We could see a two foot storm surge on top of that high tide coming just after one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Uh, 20 to 40 mile an hour winds. Now that's not all that great. However, we could get higher gusts with some of the squall lines that move through. And as I said, there's always that possibility of tornadoes that move in when you have a landfalling tropical system. And uh, we are going to have that somewhere in the state of Florida. Interesting to note, the satellite imagery showing a circulation right here. This is a, appears to be the mid-level circulation. However, we saw this in 2001 with Gabrielle. The actual low pressure center at one point was down here, but then it redeveloped a little bit off to the northeast. Is this going to happen? We're not sure, but a reconnaissance aircraft will be investigating the area at around 2 a.m. to get more data to find out exactly where that center is. Right now, it's a kind of an estimate. Uh, it's right about here, the low-level circulation, but that mid-level circulation appears appears to be uh, well to the east and sometimes the low at the surface can shift underneath that. So we'll see how that plays out. Winds at 40 miles an hour, gust as high as 50 right now. And as the forecast path and track goes, it has shifted a little bit to the south and east. Uh, but for the time being, it looks like the center of the uh, strongest winds will stay to our north. However, as I mentioned, there's always that possibility of getting wind gusts even higher than the actual sustained winds. And we could see that happening as the feeder bands move on in, or at least the big lines of storms move on. And this is at Monday just after noon. You can see that tropical storm or near tropical storm force winds could be moving in. And then it would stick around through around uh, 7, 8 o'clock and then get out of here by 9 o'clock as far as the uh, strongest winds go. It'll still be breezy, uh, mind you, on Tuesday, but as far as the strongest winds go and the biggest impacts, I think, for our coast will be uh, from about midday tomorrow up until around 7, 8 o'clock. So we'll see how that goes out. But until then, we're going to get bombarded by showers and thunderstorms uh, during the morning hours. Right now, there's not a lot of twist or motion with these, so that's some good news there on that front. Uh, but more rain developing out in the Gulf of Mexico and even over land. So we'll keep an eye on that. Right now, Northport getting some uh, pretty heavy rainfall right now, as well as into uh, parts of Charlotte County. Uh, Port Charlotte, in pretty moderate rain right now. And uh, it's lessening somewhat in Lakewood Ranch, but to the east of Lakewood Ranch, some heavier showers and storms. Was, as I mentioned, there's more rain down to our south which will be moving in our direction uh, through the morning and throughout the day tomorrow. Rainfall, I said already, up to two inches in some places and uh, near the coast uh, with a squall that moved through there earlier, 1.7 inches near Bayshore Gardens and also into Braden over an inch of rainfall. Now, the tornado outlook from the Storm Prediction Center gives us a 10% chance. You know, the tornadoes we had in January, it was only at 5%, so this is a little higher tomorrow, and that covers much of the peninsula. A uh, rainfall forecast, anywhere from three to up to uh, six inches of rain, I think. But uh, we could see more depending upon the future path. If it shifts a little bit more to, more to the east, uh, which uh, may occur, we may see this a uh, little bit more rainfall around town. And that could be a uh, little bit more as far as flooding goes, a concern. You can see this is at Monday again at 1030 a.m. Big storms moving on in. And then again throughout the afternoon, another band of showers and storms. This isn't uh, set in stone, as I said, uh, alluded to, but I think we'll see a lot of heavy rainfall at times with some gusty winds up to maybe 40, 50 miles an hour, but sustained winds probably 25 to 35 miles an hour. Water temperature is still very warm here in the low 80s, but not extremely warm like you would see in August and September. So that's one of the benefits, too, that we have going for us as far as uh, anything really getting intense as far as that goes. And the wind shear is not all that strong. This, uh, this is indicating shear, but that's because of the strong winds we're expecting with the uh, storm itself near the center. Tides. Uh, the next tide, which will be important, will be the high tide at 107 tomorrow afternoon, and the sunrise will be at 635. The forecast tonight, strong storms, heavy rain still possible, 78 for your low, so a warm and muggy night. Tomorrow, look for showers and storms, flooding possible, 83 degrees. We'll have gusts as high as 35 miles an hour at times, but with those individual storms that move in, they could be as high as 40 to 50. And then we'll see uh, rain still Monday night. Tuesday, it starts to calm down a bit. On, on the morning, 70% chance for showers and storms, and then we'll get back to more average conditions by Wednesday. Looking forward to that. Max?